There's a phrase in the sutta we chanted just now, vinaya loke abhijadamana san, subduing greed and aversion with regard to the world, or greed and distress. The word vinaya, subduing there, relates to vinaya, which is the discipline. We're disciplining the minds when we practice right mindfulness and on into right concentration. This is a part of concentration that some people don't like. There's that interpretation of mindfulness as being broad and open and accepting, and concentration as being narrow and restrictive. And in one sense it is, but the same thing applies to the mindfulness. When you hold on to the body as your frame of reference, you have to stay with the body. Anything else that's not related to the body, you've got to put aside, you've got to subdue. And as you focus in, though, you find that things open up in the mind as you get to know the present moment a lot better. And the mind being focused in the present moment a lot better, you see the mind a lot more clearly than you would if you just followed it as it wandered around. This is why even though the focus may be a little bit narrow in the sense that you're not going to be thinking about just any old thing that comes into the mind. Still, you get to know this one spot really well, and it opens up. So even though there's a narrowing, there's also a broadening that you begin to realize there's a whole world here, and the source of everything you experience in the world is happening right here, in this very narrow confine of the mind with the breath together with the body. So don't think of it as restrictive. When I first ordained, I was chafing against the rules a lot. But then I began to realize the fact that we had rules as monks meant that we were free to give our whole day to the meditation. So some restrictions actually open up possibilities. If the monks weren't abiding by the rules, who would want to put food in their bowls? Who would want to support them? They made me think of a novel by Hesse. I've forgotten the name, but it was about two young monks. And one of them decides to leave the monastery. He takes up a life as a wandering minstrel and has lots of adventures. But the adventures kind of go through his life like water through your fingers. Years later, he comes back to the monastery and finds his friend who had stayed in the monastery within the walls, and who was now being hailed as a great saint who had found all kinds of things in his mind that he wouldn't have found otherwise if he hadn't restricted his focus. So the worlds to explore in here. As you put aside the worlds outside, you find there's a bigger world in here, a more important world in here, the world of what your mind is doing right now. So this is why we train the mind. This is why we impose duties on it. Now, these duties are not imposed from outside. They're simply imposed by the fact of, that we're suffering. We want to find a way out. We've got the duties of the Four Noble Truths, to comprehend the suffering, to abandon the cause. to realize the cessation of suffering by developing the path. So here we are trying to develop the path and trying to abandon everything that's going to get in the way of the path. You've got to keep these duties foremost in mind, because without them, the mind just kind of wanders around. There's that interpretation of insight where everything is based on the three characteristics. But the three characteristics, if they're not in the context of the Four Noble Truths, don't have any duties. You can see things being in constant, stressful, not self. And you can come to all kinds of conclusions about what you might want to do. Just say, just let things arise and pass away and try to think of them appearing and disappearing in a great emptiness without you having to do much of anything else. Or you can decide that you want to hold on to squeeze whatever little pleasure you can out of the temporary things, even though you know they're going to be temporary, you have that kind of bittersweet knowledge, or here's the pleasure that comes from it, I'll take it while I can, as if that were any solution to the problem of suffering. 
there are lots of different ways you can take those three characteristics, and a lot of different ways that people do. You end up wandering all over the place. You can even impose a materialistic view on things, saying things are rising, pass away. There really is no self. There's nobody there. It's just physical events. So things don't really matter. That's what happens with three characteristics if they're not in the context of the Four Noble Truths. Because once they're in the context, then there are duties. And you know when to apply these contemplations and when not. So you apply them right now, and then subduing greed and distress with reference to the world. Okay, You try to see the aspects of the world that have you attracted, that have you, have you snared. Try to see them. They're inconstant. They're stressful. They're not self. They're not under your control. Why dabble in them when you can actually get the mind more under your control? That's the proper use of those things right now. So we're here to learn a skill. We're here to commit ourselves to a skill, to a narrowing of our focus of attention, to the point where the real problem is. As I would have said, all dhammas come from desire. And in this case, dhammas mean all phenomena, except for nirvana. Nirvana is beyond dhammas. And so what is desire doing in your mind right now? Where is it heading? Where is it going? You want to see this clearly, and this is why we focus our desires on getting the mind to settle down. That's a good desire you want to encourage, because it's part of the path. If you want to find the bliss that comes from right concentration, you've got to keep your focus right here, stay right here. Adjust the breath so it feels good, adjust your mind so it feels good with the breath. Anything else that comes up, you just got to let it go. You got to keep your focus right here. You're learning a skill, which means that there are things you have to give up, as with any sport. Certain activities you have to avoid when you're in training. Or when you're learning music, your friends may be outside playing, well, you've got to stick with your, with your instrument. But then you realize that the happiness that comes from mastering a skill is much greater than just wandering around, doing what you feel like doing. Because the mind doesn't develop any good qualities just by wandering around, but the qualities of persistence and focusing your desire in the right place, paying careful attention to what you're doing, using your ingenuity to figure out what to, what to improve, what to maintain, how to improve things. These are the qualities that lead to concentration. These are the qualities that lead to skill and mastering of any skill. But they require that you give up a fair number of things, but the rewards are great. The world of the mind, as you get to know it, becomes a much bigger and more interesting place than the world outside. You look at the world outside, how much of it can you control? You read the news, everything's going crazy. Why clutter up your mind with what's going on out there? You've got enough clutter already in here that's getting in the way of your seeing what the mind is doing right now. And the news in here is something that you can be the person who writes the news, creates the news, makes it really good news. One more person has found the end of suffering, carrying on the Buddha's wish. And that's the kind of news you want to write. It has much more lasting value. in the news outside, out there in the, the world of greed and distress. Years back there was a Dharma talk by John Mahabua. It was printed with a notice at the beginning. This was The talk was given in response to one of the more important monks of modern Thailand. And it wasn't a famous monk, but it was a monk who had a high attainment. That's where the important things are, is the people who learn how to clean up their minds. That's the really good news in the world. And so here's your opportunity to create that news by putting aside your greed for the world and your distress around the world, learning sub to subdue the mind that wants to wander around at will, and focus your will on something that's really important, 
to figuring out the cause of things in the mind. The more you focus here, the more you're going to see. The more you see that there is here to see. And this really is the solution to all your problems. <laughs>